cool. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll start. We'll start slowly. I'm sure people are, are going to keep joining, so uh, we'll get to it. But this is uh, the first in a series of um, Twitter Spaces that we're going to be hosting with L1 companies. Um, so we'll be interviewing uh, a whole host of, uh, of L1 blockchain companies. And this is really around, um, this stems from the fact that Quinta.com, we recently introduced a, a research paper looking uh, in a lot of depth on layer ones that are out there, obviously a very essential part of uh, the blockchain eco ecosystem, the, the sort of main road uh, that every transaction travels through. And there's, and there's now, you know, uh, a few years ago, there was there were there were a few layer ones and layer twos, and uh, these days there's a, there's a whole bunch, and there's there's new ones uh, starting seemingly every week. So uh, the team at Crypto.com on the research side have uh, put together this very uh, interesting and very deep dive on uh, layer one and layer two tech. So go to Crypto.com slash uh, research to find that paper and uh, all the others that are being released every week. And uh, I'm sure you'll you'll learn plenty and uh, have plenty of questions to ask too. So as I say, this is the first uh, AMA that we're doing, um, but we plan to do I think uh, five or six going forward on a on a weekly basis. So again, like uh, make sure that you're following the Crypto.com account and uh, you'll be kept up to date with what we who we've got on and when we've got them coming. Um, okay, so let's start. Shri. So we're starting off with with Pronos. Let's say uh, the two speakers that we've got here, Ella and Ken, are very much uh, critical to, to what's being built here. Um, so I'll let them um, introduce themselves and uh, explain the, sort of how they how they came to be uh, at the Kronos team and also what they do here. So um, Ella and Ken, uh, take it away, please. Uh, yep, yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Ken Timzit, and I'm the head of Kronos Chain and more specifically, the head of uh, the entity called Kronos Labs, uh, which is the team in charge of co uh, coordinating the technical work around the development of Kronos as an open source project, uh, and also the team in charge of uh, promoting its adoption by users and developers. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Ella Chang. Uh, I lead ecosystem and partnerships uh, at Kronos Labs. So our team uh, is responsible for getting developers and projects to onboard to Kronos and provide all the different supports and resources that I will talk about later. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Great to get your intros. Again, just to recap for anyone who just joined, um, my name's John, and I'm a partner with the uh, Crypto.com Capital team. I'll be your host today. We're going to go uh, in-depth on Kronos. Okay, so let's start from the top. So uh, just curious, guys, can you, uh, and Ken, this is probably a good question for you. Can you explain the origin story of uh, Kronos? How did Kronos come to be, and uh, what's the mission that Kronos has? Yeah, thanks, John. Um, so the... Like uh, Ella, like you, John, and uh, a few of the people on this call, you know, I've been in crypto for a few years. And you know, I, th I think the, the origin story of Kronos is really that you know, for a few years, I've been trying to evangelize crypto, um, trying to explain to my friends and family how to create a wallet, how to use DeFi apps, how to buy an NFT. And um, let's face it, you know, it's still hard uh, for mainstream users um, to adopt that technology and to get fully comfortable with all its concepts and to jump through all the hoops that you have to go through uh, to use applications. And so, you know, I, I, it's, you know, th that realization has become a major frustration for me uh, after a few years. And so, uh, to a large extent, the mission of Kronos is inspired by, that, by this pain point. So the mission of Kronos is quite simply uh, to be an ecosystem where we are helping to bring the next billion consumers to Web3. And that means that you know, we really define ourselves by our role in uh, bringing the next generation of Web3 users, not just to our chain, but to the entire ecosystem. And we are doing that by... Uh, looking at the bottlenecks and blockers uh, that are preventing you know, uh, our friends and family 
from adopting crypto and removing them uh, one after the other. And I would uh, group those blockers or those pain points that we're trying to address in three broad categories. Uh, so the first one is, of course, um, you know, like uh, the technical pain points associated with uh, Ethereum mainnet, uh, which is the, the network where most activities happening right now. Uh, so everyone knows about the high transaction fees, uh, slow throughput, uh, and until the merge, you know, high energy consumption of uh, Ethereum. And so Kronos, uh, you know, like uh, a few other uh, alternative chains, um, you know, uh, is removing those pain points by offering a public blockchain that is fast, uh, cheap, uh, and eco-friendly, and you know, soon. Uh, completely carbon neutral. The second set of pain points is around uh, integration with the real world and the world of fiat currency. And so, you know, uh, you know part of parcel of the Kronos promise is this uh, partnership that we have with uh, Crypto.com. And so there is this idea that uh, as a mainstream user, you can first convert your fiat currency into crypto via a, a centralized exchange, uh, Crypto.com, you can link your centralized exchange account uh, with a self-custodial wallet, the Crypto.com DeFi wallet. And from there, uh, you can uh, very easily top up your wallet with all kinds of cryptos and uh, connect to a wide range of DeFi, NFT, and gaming apps. And so this integration and partnership with uh, a custodial exchange um, you know, is part of... Um, it's essential to our vision of having a smooth user experience uh, and is uh, the, the second uh, uh, type of pain point that we're trying to solve, which is really the UI. And then thirdly, um, you know, the, um, uh, the, the third pain point is that apps are still uh, hard to understand. Uh, to use. Uh, there are all kinds of concepts around farming and staking, which are not easy to understand for the everyday user. And so we're trying to build an ecosystem with Kronos of like-minded uh, builders, application developers, who believe like, just like us that we need to simplify the user experience. And through Kronos Labs, we're encouraging them to do that, and um, uh, in some cases, supporting them to do that, so that the apps on Kronos are as user-friendly and easy to understand as possible. So that's really what we're the journey that we are embarking upon. We've made a lot of progress since the the chain went live in November of last year, uh, but definitely there's still a huge uh, amount of work ahead of us, and we're going to talk about it today. And that's amazing, Ken. And, and and some of the data that you guys that you guys share, I know there's uh, you have some data on on uh, how how quickly Kronos has grown to being a major chain. Is there any uh, data that you can share on that? The TVL and other, another. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, so a few key uh, uh, like numbers uh, in terms of progress so far. So the chain went live in November of last year. It very quickly became a top ten, top ten chain uh, amongst all blockchains in total value locked, uh, which is what measures the amount of money invested in DeFi applications, uh, and uh, also a top five chain amongst all um, EVM chains, Ethereum-compatible chains. Uh, we are now close to a million uh, users on the chain out of a total addressable user base of the 50 million members of the CrowFam uh, family. Uh, the number of users is growing at a steady clip of around uh, 20% uh, per month. And uh, in terms of... Um, uh, developer ecosystem, we are well beyond the 300 uh, third-party applications deployed on Kronos that are generating uh, hundreds of thousands of transactions per day. Uh, so there is real activity going on um, uh, around those applications. I'm, I'm really excited when I go back for uh, for Christmas uh, lunch with my family, they're going to be talking about Kronos as well as uh, Bitcoin and ETH. Very cool. So. Um, Ella, let, let, let's get into a bit more a bit more detail on um, on sort of how the ecosystem looks. Can you can give us an overview of uh, the sort of type of apps um, that are that are that are being uh, built on the Kronos ecosystem? What are the sort of focus verticals and the most interesting things that you're seeing in terms of 
a, uh, a user application standpoint. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I think can give like an overview of how many dApps and partners that we currently have on the Kronos mainnet. Um, and among those, uh, we're seeing mostly uh, getting to three different verticals, so DeFi, NFT, and gaming. Um, and I think a lot of the demands are really comes from the Crow fam, uh, the 50 million Crow fam users that uh, already have a big community even pre uh, Kronos mainnet, right? Uh, and uh, we're continue listening to uh, the community to to hear from like what what you guys want to play, what what you guys want to see in the Kronos ecosystem. Um, on the DeFi front, uh, as Ken mentioned earlier, uh, so right now we're looking at about uh, 800 million uh, TVLs, uh, which is the main metric tracking the DeFi performance. We're uh, one of the top nine chains by TVL, just right below Optimism right now. And at a point in April this year, uh, we once hit, uh, Kronos once hit uh, over 3 billion uh, by TVL, which is a huge milestone, uh, Consider how young the ecosystem and chain has been around. Um, so in the DeFi uh, vertical, a lot of the, the, the built basic building blocks has been built up already uh, in the Kronos ecosystem. So we have the DEXs, decentralized exchange. Um, so the main ones, such as VBS, uh, uh, MMF, uh, which are the uh, AMMs uh, on Kronos. Uh, a lot of, I see a lot of the, the users here uh, listening to this call as well. Uh, Ferro, which is recently launched, uh, it's a stable swap uh, protocol um, that allows you to have very uh, low fee and low slippage when you uh, want to trade uh, a trading pair that's very close to each other uh, price-wise. So this is a very interesting one for stable, uh, stable coins, liquid staking uh, tokens. Uh, Chronoswap, Codex, those are the top DEXs on Chronos. And on the money market, the lending space, uh, there's Tectonic, which has launched uh, right after uh, Chronos mainnet launched as well, Mimas, uh, which also recently just launched the DeFira, which is a gamified DeFi experience uh, project uh, that allows users to do all kind of DeFi, uh, uh, have experience uh, such as um, borrow lending and, and swap and yield farm in a gamified way. So I encourage you guys to check it out as well. Annex Finance uh, also provide uh, borrow lending and uh, uh, decentralized exchange um, on the liquid staking front, uh, Argo is a is a protocol that is one of it's the first uh, liquid stake um, CRO uh, protocol that allows you to stake uh, CRO, but also can uh, utilize your your CRO into other stake CRO into other DeFi uh, uh, applications. So it really like unlocked the the, the liquidity uh, of your CRO while earning yields. Um, and then we're seeing more and more structured products as well. Uh, single finance is a is a one that allows you to uh, have delta neutral uh, uh, leverage yield farming strategies. So uh, you can hedge the risk while at the same time earning yields. Uh, and more and more, I think uh, you guys will be hearing, uh, seeing new announcements of various structured products. Um, derivatives, a DeFi protocols that will be coming to Kronos uh, in the coming months. Uh, NFT has always been a very uh, exciting space in, in Kronos. Uh, EB Sube has you know, launched on Kronos even before the mainnet start. And now uh, there's minted uh, NFT marketplace and crypto.com NFT marketplace also supports Kronos chain. Um, and then we're also very bullish on the gaming vertical because we believe that gaming is really uh, the uh, the sector that can bring the next billions of users into Web3, right? So currently, DigiPal uh, and Defira are the live uh, gaming products on Kronos. And then we have uh, a few other protocols, uh, gaming projects in the current accelerator program uh, that are pretty exciting. Uh, Wild Forest, uh, Eyeball Pool, the new Resistance, Harbor. So those are in the development phase and then uh, will be launching in the coming months. Awesome, a lot, lot going on there. Shout out to you, uh, to to uh, the loaded lines NFTs too, right? That's a very big part of the crypto.com um, NFT space. 
Um, for sure. Right, you can. Um, as I mentioned at, at the at the start, for anyone who missed it, there's a, there's a whole load of um, L1s and also L2s out there, and it seems like there's a new L1 launching every month, right? There's there's obviously there's a lot of interest in in building chains that can um, offer you know, practical advantages, like you know faster speeds, and uh, there's also a lot that have been built for particular verticals, whether it's DeFi or gaming. Um, just curious, can, can you sort of sketch out? The advantages that, uh, that you see Kronos has over other L ones out there, because it's a very, a very com- competitive uh, area. So the way that I look at it is that uh, Kronos is a full package. Right. Um, what I mean by that is we are not an R and D project. That means to demonstrate that a particular piece of technology, like optimistic rollups or ZK proofs is working. We're, um, we're building a full package that differentiates itself or positions itself along multiple dimensions in a way that makes it likely that we are going to be one of the few, the handful of really big ecosystems um, at, you know, in the next bull market. Uh, so first of all, uh, Kronos is EVM compatible, uh, meaning Ethereum compatible. Uh, so this differentiates Kronos, obviously, uh, against uh, chains like Solana or, or Tron. Right? It's really um, the manifestation of our belief that uh, the Ethereum uh, community, from a developer standpoint, is you know by a few you know, one or two orders of magnitude the largest developer community. That's where all the innovation is happening. Um, that's uh, the easiest. Uh, you know, that's where you have the easiest um, set of tools um, for anyone to, almost anyone to develop an application. And so we've clearly um, embraced this, this ecosystem and decided to be part of it. Number two, um, I think today we've decided to be on par with uh, other EVM compatible uh, chains when it comes to uh, transaction speed, um, eco friendliness and you know, orders, you know, the, the range of uh, transaction fees that people are paying when they're using the chain. Uh, so, if you compare uh, Kronos with uh, BNP chain, Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism, you know, I, I think we're uh, broadly in the same range across those uh, key usage, usage metrics. And of course, those vary over time, but we're, we're in that ballpark. Number three, of course, there is this. Um, partnership with crypto.com, which we think is an essential part of the positioning. Right? Um, how can you uh, explain that you're the chain for the next uh, billion Web3 users if you don't have a solution to on-ramp, uh, which, which is the term that we use to describe the transition uh, or the conversion from fiat currency to crypto? Uh, so only two chains you know, have really have that um, uh, positioning today, uh, BNB chain and us. and uh, although, and I think you know, the communities don't overlap that much, um, so there is uh, space and a reason for those two chains to exist and to serve their respective communities. And finally, um, so Kronos is built on the Cosmos SDK, uh, which is a technical way of saying that in addition to being interoperable with Ethereum, we're also interoperable with all the Cosmos chains uh, through uh, bridges uh, that make it possible to transfer tokens securely. And I think you know, this reflects, again, our belief that we are not here to build a niche chain. We're uh, here to build an ecosystem where everyone is welcome. And you know, one way of doing that is by building bridges and connections to as many other chains as we can, uh, either through IBC uh, or uh, through crypto.com, where, where it's very easy to transfer tokens um, from and to Kronos today. Uh, so I think those f- four elements are, are all part of our positioning and differentiation, and they need to be looked at together, right? So EVM compatibility, uh, number two, performance, number three, uh, partnership with crypto.com, uh, number four, um, integration and connectivity with Cosmos and other chains. Makes sense. So Ken's uh, laid out the, um, the the technical angle, the reasons why uh, anyone who's developing uh, dApps or other uh, web three services would would want to take uh, to take their products onto the Kronos chain. Um, Ella, perhaps you can explain 
um, how you're working with those those uh, d developers who are interested in bringing their their products to Kronos. What are some of the tools and the and the support program? Sorry, that you guys have. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we have various different uh, programs that tailor to developers or projects at different stage. Uh, so mainly uh, into three buckets. One is uh, for early stage developers or developers want to just try out Kronos Chain or they have an idea and want to uh, uh, test it out uh, uh, within a short period of time. I think hackathons would be great for, for those developers. So last year we organized a Kronos hackathon with Dora Hacks. Uh, and right now there's actually an ongoing hackathon uh, co-organized with the Morales uh, on gaming and metaverse uh, theme. Um, so uh, we also go to, uh, we go to various uh, uh, like in real life uh, hackathons as well. Uh, so for example, we sponsored the East Global uh, Hackathon in New York City, and then we will be going to other, uh, a few other Ethereum-led uh, hackathons uh, in, in various cities. Uh, and stay tuned for the announcement if, if you uh, happen to be attending those hackathon events as well. Um, and then uh, for a bit more established projects and also infrastructure projects, we have a ecosystem grants program. So this program is really to help uh, projects to start on board to Kronos, right? Um, and it can be, uh, it doesn't have a specific uh, vertical target. It can be applications, whether you're DeFi, uh, uh, gaming, uh, and, uh, NFT tooling, and NFT fi, uh, or it can be a, a critical infrastructure or a, a, uh, provider that uh, we see a gap in the Kronos ecosystem. So for the grants program, uh, uh, there's a dedicated page. So if you're projects that are looking to uh, uh, getting some support from the Kronos team, uh, feel free to go to uh, Kronos.org and then there uh, and then you can apply the, the grants program from there. And then uh, the last one, uh, Accelerator Program. So this is a new initiative that we launched uh, a few months ago. And this is a, a more hands-on uh, program that we recruit very early stage, uh, high quality projects, uh, very good teams onto Kronos where we support, uh, support them with uh, various uh, workshops, one-on-one uh, -on -one advisory. We invite uh, mentors and speakers from reputable uh, tier one uh, crypto VCs, infrastructure players, et cetera, to provide really hands-on uh, support to those, uh, to those projects. So we're at uh, week eight, uh, uh, week seven uh, for this first cohort. Um, and then this will be a program that will be uh, running on a quarterly basis. So more and more details uh, will be coming up. And if your projects that are kind of looking for this kind of, uh, these uh, accelerator programs, uh, then uh, watch out for the cohort to uh, announcement uh, and get ready to apply. Um, and then outside of these three programs, uh, obviously on the ecosystem and partnerships team, we really believe that for a Web3 project to build on Kronos or enter into a new ecosystem, uh, a very key success factor is uh, you get the uh, exposure and help uh, and, the, and, and the exposure to the community, right? So this is what we really focus on uh, when a new project comes on board to Kronos. So we provide uh, co-marketing announcement, AMAs, work on educational content with various projects, uh, especially given that a lot of the Kronos users are actually quite new to Web3. Right? So I, we truly believe that education is a key factor to get those users comfortable with using the various steps out there. Uh, and then another thing, especially for the DeFi protocols, uh, we call it like Lego building, right? So a key success for DeFi protocols is the interoperabilities among the various DeFi protocols uh, in the same ecosystem. So our team is also, uh, very keen to support uh, new entrants into the Kronos ecosystem to facilitate those introductions to other players uh, in Kronos to really build out this uh, DeFi Lego uh, within Kronos. 
Cool. Thanks so much for sharing that, Ella. Um, just, let's just quickly re recap for anyone who's just joined. Uh, this is the first AMA that, uh, of five, five or six that we're planning that are going to look uh, in depth at pro uh, prominent layer ones and layer twos in the crypto space. The reason that we're hosting these events is uh, to highlight the work that crypto.com has done on the uh, research side of our business. So if you go to crypto.com slash uh, research, you can see the uh, weekly reports the team is producing. One of the huge ones they just shipped at the end of August was uh, a big look uh, in depth at layer ones and layer twos, and hence why we've invited, starting with Kronos, a number of uh, prominent players to explain more about what they do. Uh, okay, so with that in mind, let's uh, let's switch the questions uh, slightly. Um, Ken, I was wondering if you could explain a little bit about the uh, this the decentralization status of the Kronos network. Um, there's currently there's 27 uh, validators that that take part in the network. Um, perhaps you could explain a little bit about um, why that's structured as it is and um, whether you have plans to add to that uh, 20, 27 that you've got currently. Yeah, uh, so very quickly, uh, in summary, I think we are where we want to be today in terms of um, decentralization. And you know, where are we? We are, of course, at the level of decentralization, which is not as extensive as Ethereum mainnet or the Bitcoin network. But you know, comparable with uh, almost every other, or uh, I would you know, and I would dare to say every other um, alternative chain. Given that every alternative chain depends in some respect on a few uh, entities, you know, critically, whether it is to run validators uh, or to run sequencers or to uh, drive the technical development um, and governance of the chain. Um, so we're at a level with twenty-seven validators where I think that we are able to deliver stability, uh, censorship resistance, and no single point of failure. And at the same time, you know, we are, again, part of a broader ecosystem. Um, we're not building a walled garden, right? So we're part of a broader ecosystem, which is the Ethereum ecosystem. And so if users at any point you know, feel that um, uh, they are unsure about uh, you know, um, some uh, geopolitical event, or they want to put their holdings in some place where they know, um, you know they, they want to hold it for the next 10 years, they can always very easily transfer their holdings to Ethereum mainnet uh, and then go back and forth and um, use Kronos whenever they want to take advantage of a cheap um, trading and in interesting investment opportunities. Uh, so we're part of a broad ecosystem, which is extremely decentralized, and, and we're playing our part to uh, deliver enough decentralization to be stable and have no single point of failure, but at the same time, you know, deliver scalability and low transaction fees uh, as uh, every other alternative L1 or L2 is doing. Makes sense. So it's, a, it's about finding a balance, right, between b between the two. Um, that makes sense. We've, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've talked about uh, CrowFam and Crypto.com a bit. Um, Ella, I was wondering if you could um, illustrate or go into a bit more detail perhaps on um, the relationship between Kronos and Crypto.com, because I know um, it's uh, th there's obviously a, a lot of synergy. You know, Crypto.com's uh, Twitter account is actually the host of this AMA. So, yeah, just curious if, if you could if you could shed a little bit more light on the uh, relationship between these two entities. Yeah, for sure. I think Ken kind of shared a bit on the origin of uh, Kronos. Right, it really goes back to the question of how to onboard the next billions of users onto Web three and uh, I, I, I really believe that a centralized platform could play a very important role into this because for everyday users, uh, having a familiar brand, uh, a bridging between custodial and non-custodial experience with a fiat on-ramp and off-ramp uh, infrastructure, the education and exposure is very crucial. So this is kind of the relationship between Kronos and Crypto.com. So it can give you a few examples, right? Uh, I think crypto.com sure. crypto crypto is an exchange and app. Uh, it already supports a lot of various chains. For example, like USDC, it supports eight chains, including Kronos. So uh, it can facil be facilitated as a, as a centralized bridge for users to easily 
uh, uh, withdrawing deposit USDC from all these other chains over to Pronos and vice versa. For Ethereum, e ETH token, it supports six chains. And then there's also other tokens, for example, Dogecoin, uh, XLM, XRP, for example, like those, those tokens uh, where it doesn't necessarily have a DeFi yield opportunities uh, on their own uh, chain, but uh, because crypto.com supports uh, the native chain and also Kronos, like those uh, can find their DeFi use cases on Kronos. Uh, so it's a great fit to their original uh, uh, holders, right? Uh, and then crypto.com also have this DeFi wallet, which is a fully self-custodial wallet. And uh, it's, the product has been super supportive of the Kronos ecosystem. So if you go to their DApp browser, Kronos DApps are featured as a category. Um, and then uh, the, the wallet also have a native swap and earn uh, feature. So it has integration in the back scene with the various uh, dApps, uh, uh, DeFi applications, for example, on Kronos, obviously with, with other chains as well, but Kronos uh, are also uh, supported. Um, so when you do a swap or, or earn, uh, for example, Crow uh, uh, within the DeFi wallet, it's actually uh, the yield comes from um, the, the various different protocols uh, of Kronos. And then um, it also allows you to connect to the crypto.com account uh, if you want to opt in. Uh, and that really provides a fiat on ramp and off ramp experience for Web3 users, right? It streams line experience where you can earn DeFi yield and then withdraw over to crypto.com account and then you can uh, like spend on uh, your crypto.com account or, or send it over to your uh, bank account, for example. I think this is also something that's really uh, critical to get mass adoption. Got it. Thanks for that. Um, there's a big, uh, there's a big topic. The biggest topic in crypto at the moment is about the Ethereum uh, merge that's coming up, and obviously the impact um, that proof of stake can have in terms of making the the chain a lot more scalable. Obviously, a very common uh, complaint, and addressing some of the uh, concerns on environmental impact uh, also. Um, Ken, a question for you here, like, uh, does the merge impact Kronos in any way? Not in a direct way. So I think that the merge is um, uh, a proof that um, the Ethereum ecosystem of which we are part of uh, can get it, it act together and can deliver on development objectives. The Ethereum community said, you know, we're going to move to proof of stake. Uh, we're going to become more energy friendly. Um, after much pain, uh, they managed to do it. And I think it validates our choice to be part of this ecosystem. At the same time, the merge does not, uh, is not designed to reduce transaction fees or to uh, increase the throughput. Um, so th the pain points that we are solving with Kronos in terms of performance and in terms of mass adoption uh, remain relevant. Um, so I think it's it's a great news that the merge is happening. Um, it does not uh, directly impact Kronos, but again, it's a, it's, a, it's proof for the crypto doubters out there, out there and for those who believe that you know, only um, traditional banks are able to, to deliver on uh, long-term technical roadmaps that you know, a, a decentralized system can also deliver on that. Great. Thanks for making that clear, Ken. Um, speaking of other chains, um, Ella, what uh, can you give us a sort of overview of where Kronos is at in terms of bridging to other chains right now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we the Kronos ecosystem is very embracing the the multi-chain world, where ideally, like users don't need to. Uh, know like what chain uh, their, their application is based on and then they can uh, use have the user experience where uh, you know it can go from one chain to the other without uh, having to show on the user interface but I, I think that the space is or the industry is not there yet and we're uh, working with uh, the various uh, other, other chains and ecosystem partners to uh, you know going into that direction right uh, a few different ways to bridge from uh, uh, to, to for interoperabilities with Kronos and other chains. Uh, so I, I talked about uh, the Web2 uh, platforms such as uh, Crypto.com, App and Exchange, and, and using using that centralized platform as a bridge uh, across various chains to Kronos. Um, and then uh, 
because Kronos is a, a Cosmos SDK based chain, uh, which it has a native uh, interoperable uh, messaging protocol called IBC. So when Kronos launched in November uh, last year, we already uh, enabled the IBC bridge capability. Uh, uh, so right now, Kronos has IBC bridge with Cosmos ecosystem chains, such as Crypto.org chain, Cosmos Hub, Akash, and many more to come. So this allows uh, users to bridge tokens and in the future also general messaging uh, uh, across uh, all these Cosmos uh, chains that we have established uh, an IBC relationship with. Um, and then with the EVM ecosystem, uh, such as uh, you know uh, chains uh, like uh, BNB chain, uh, uh, Phantom, Avalanche, etc., um, there are various third-party bridges that already support Kronos. For example, Connects, Multi-Chain, Synapse, uh, they all support Kronos. Um, and then users can, based on you know which token that you want to bridge over, you can pick and choose which bridge you want to use. Um, and then there's also a native uh, bridge called Gravity Bridge, uh, which is the canonical uh, Ethereum to Kronos bridge. And we're currently at the, the testnet phase for, for Gravity Bridge. Awesome. Thanks for that overview. Um, very, very, very detailed. Um, okay, Let, let's look a little bit further into the into the future. Um, Ken, what what are the plans uh, for Kronos in the medium in in the medium to long term? So three main uh, streams um, or three main themes in terms of what to look forward to on Kronos. Theme number one, of course, uh, technical improvements and scalability. Um, no, not many people know this, um, but you know, while the market was slowing down, we have already quadrupled the throughput capacity of Kronos uh, during the first half of this year, uh, going uh, from 10 million gas to 40 million gas per block. Um, and um, we have more um, you know, technical milestones ahead of us. Uh, in a few weeks, we will publish a more comprehensive technical roadmap uh, describing the next steps for Kronos. Uh, but there's uh, a, lot of, a lot more scalability that we can deliver. And of course, um, from an environmental standpoint, we're also uh, going to announce uh, how we can achieve carbon neutrality, uh, which, is, you know, a very which is going to be a very important milestone for us. Theme number two, uh, more dApps. Uh, so, Kronos has uh, the Kronos Accelerator Program, uh, which is a quarterly program where we onboard around 10 startups that we think can deliver you know, outstanding innovation to the chain, uh, applications that you haven't seen before. The first cohort started in July um, and will uh, finish in September uh, and will go live you know, shortly after that. So you know, I think for us, um, that's really exciting because we're starting a new cycle of building um, with this first cohort and the next ones that are going to follow. And I'm very excited by that. And a uh, third theme is social. Um, so if everyone has been talking about you know, how decentralized networks are the solution to centralized uh, tech giants and uh, social networks. Uh, without really, um, but, but we haven't seen the killer app yet, right? Um, so, uh, but I think that we're getting close. Uh, and on Kronos, we're playing our part. Um, there is an application, a, a protocol that just launched on uh, on Kronos called Kronos ID, which is meant to be a social layer on top of Web3. Right now, it's um, no, a, a protocol for you to purchase a domain name that you can associate with your wallet address, so a human, uh, so that you have a human readable wallet address. But next, it's going to incorporate uh, notification and messaging features, uh, allowing you to receive uh, alerts and communicate to other wallets. And I think it's going to be a gateway towards a lot of innovation that so far we haven't seen in the Web3 space, in terms of, again, adding that social layer on top of Web3 and mixing social and transactional uh, interactions on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. So I'm also very excited by that. I, I don't know what it's going to look like, but um, it definitely looks very promising. 
amazing. Lots of things coming up. Um, okay, so at this point, I'm going to uh, we're going to turn to some questions uh, from the community and the audience. So we actually put out uh, a tweet uh, yesterday, I think, and uh, we picked a few questions uh, from users that I'm going to pose now. So the first one is from uh, a Twitter user called Zeus CFF. And his question actually is is very simple. Um, when will Kronos come out of beta? So the reason, you know, the main reason why we're calling Kronos beta is to make sure that new newcomers, new users, know that they need to pay attention and be careful when they're using uh, self-custodial uh, crypto networks. And so, you know, from that standpoint, we're not really in a rush uh, to remove the beta uh, moniker, um, you know, which also applies to lots of other uh, alternative L1s and L2s, just be because we want to you know, constantly remind people that they need, they need to be careful um, when they're manipulating uh, smart contracts and DeFi apps. But in any case, uh, formally, what we have said is that we would remove the beta when we have a uh, working trustless trustless bridge between uh, Kronos and Ethereum mainnet. Um, currently, where uh, uh, you know, the, the, that bridge, which is called the gravity bridge, is in public testnet. So everyone can use it and test it and uh, try to find vulnerabilities in it. Um, and so as soon as the testing is finished and that bridge uh, goes into mainnet, we will have achieved that milestone that we said would be the, the time when we move out of beta. Cool, makes sense. Thanks, thanks, Ken, for explaining. Uh, next question comes from uh, Nate underscore Satoshi, and uh, they ask which countries are the key priority expansions until twenty twenty three for Kronos. Uh, uh, I, I can take that one. Um, I think Web three overall is very global, right? Um, so same approach with us. Uh, Kronos, like we really embrace a uh, global approach. Uh, I, I think right now, uh, if we look at the DAP and uh, uh, user uh, coverage, uh, it's mainly coming from uh, Europe, North America, uh, Singapore. Those are the, the big, uh, if you look at the heat map, these are the, the main areas. Um, but we also recently have been re uh, getting a lot of uh, uh, traction, uh, especially on the builder side from uh, Korea, Southeast Asia, for example. I think those are the markets that are a very interesting resources uh, and, and user base in traditional gaming, in esports, in fandom. So uh, very keen to explore uh, that market, working with uh, local partners to, to build out those use cases on Kronos. Cool. And the last question, I, I got a feeling we might have actually covered some of these uh, topics, but I think it's a good one to double down on anyway. Uh, it comes from Zhang Lang, Twitter user Zhang Lang, who asks, with the L-Chain blockchains being so competitive, what is being done to attract more users to the Kronos chain? And what plans are there to, to differentiate it from Ethereum and other EVM blockchains? So indeed, we have already described uh, the various dimensions that we're pushing on or pressing on in order to uh, differentiate in the market. So to recap, right, EVM compatibility, technical performance, uh, partnership with crypto.com, and connectivity with Cosmos. I think you know, beyond that, um, th there's a few, a couple of, of other comments that I would make in answer to that question. The first one is that uh, we really believe in a multi-chain uh, future. And um, we want to position Kronos as a gateway uh, for custodial exchange users to start experimenting with DeFi and NFTs and gaming, and then you know, move on to the broader world of other chains, including Kronos, of course. And so I think we're really taking a collaborative approach to that journey. We are not combative um, and um, we're trying to uh, you know, engage in dialogue with dApps that are other chains. We're also encouraging the dApps on Kronos to expand into other chains. Uh, so I think the, you know, if you talk to many founders in our space, they will tell you that 
it's not about competition. It's about uh, growing the pie. And you know, as long as we do our part in growing the pie, uh, and we are persistent and we survive the crypto winter, uh, where you know this is going to pay, to pay off. Uh, so I think that's the the north star that we keep in mind. Uh, not so not competition, but growing the pie.